Welcome to Venus Playtrap World. Today I wanted to show you an unboxing video for five sundews that I just got from Predatory Plants. I bought these sundews online. They are actually five subtropical sundews. I didn't pick these specific ones. It's just a bundle, so they come at random. But they are all different and I'm very excited to see what I got. I really like subtropical sun sundews because they are really easy to grow almost anywhere in the world. You can grow them indoors, they do not require dormancy, and besides those two factors, you just grow them as carnivorous plants. All right, so let me show you what I got. Let's see what we got in this bundle. These five sundews are coming completely bare root, but according to the instructions, they already come with all the potting media, and they also come with five independent pots. Let's see, we have some sphagnum moss here. All right, so it seems like it's all mixed together. That's good. So we'll have to moisten that later when we pot the plants. Right, nice. We got five plastic pots, which are really the optimal material. All right, and we have Five sandwiches. Let's see, they're pretty tiny, but they look in good condition. Still look green. They were only um, they were shipped maybe a couple days ago, so they have only been in complete darkness, darkness for two to three days. Let's see if you can get a bit of a close up. I'll get them out of the bags, but just to show you how they come, they come with um, some sort of fabric that I believe they moisten and then seal, so they can remain in a humid environment through the whole trip. But of course, there's no light, so definitely the, they have a bit of a, of a rough trip. But once you unbox them and then you pot them, they should do fine. Alright, so let me put this on the side. I'm actually going to put this moss back on the box and I'm going to moisten it in a bit. But I'm going to probably go to, to the kitchen and mix it up in a large bowl. I wanted to show you what we got for each of the sundews, so you can just look at them and I'm also very curious. I didn't really know what I was going to get, but I thought, well, if I get five different sundews, it'll be awesome. And they're subtropical, so they're exactly what I was looking for. All right, this one is a Drosera pinata, and this one is really pretty. It comes, each of its branches actually uh, has bifurcations, so it splits like a fork, so it looks really cool. And it comes with a stack, so it's a good way to identify it. Let's see, what else do we get? We have a Drosera SP floating. Three more. This is a Cape Sundew. Yeah, Drosera capensis, so a Cape Sundew. You see you. some of the slime is coming out. All right, the third one, and we have two more. This one comes in the same package. They might be kind of similar. Drosera natalensis, here it is. And one more. Drosera ventusa. These ones look kind of similar. All right. And here are the five of them. I'm going to go ahead and get some of our soil prepared so we can get them inside the pot, the pots. It is fine to get a carnivorous plants online. They usually survive the trip. It's not a big deal. The only thing that you have to always take in consideration is that if the plants are arriving to your home, you must try to be around so you can get them within 24 to 48 hours when they arrived. They actually arrived last night. All right, so I'll get the soil prepared and then I'll come back and I'll pot all of these plants. Now I'm going to be potting these five beautiful sandy plants. To pot them, we really just need a couple of ingredients. First, of course, 
we need the pot, then we need the soil. We got some long fiber sphagnum moss coming with the plants, which I have already moistened it. Uh, this is important that you use potting media that does not contain any type of minerals and long fiber sphagnum moss is, is perfect for that. I have moistened it with distilled water. This is also of crucial importance. You need to use pure water sources, like for example, rainwater, distilled water or RO water. Anything else will probably end up killing your plants. So just to stick to any of those three. So I have already moistened the, the, the moss and I've also moistened some other soil that I have that it's about three parts peat moss and two parts perlite. I already had these mixed up from, from another plant that I potted. So I just moistened it too and I put it in this container. So what I'm going to do, I'm probably going to pick a couple of them that I'm going to use the long fiber sphagnum moss. And then for the other three, I'm going to use the peat moss. This is just personal preference. Both of them work just fine. It is very important that you, before you pot them here, it is very important that you moisten both of them. And they have to be completely soaked. Why? Because if they are kind of dry and you pot them and then you try to, to moisten them, it is actually extremely hard. You will go through like gallons of water because this type of media takes a little while to get it completely humid. So instead of just get a large container, put it all in there, put a ton of water, mix it up, uh, make sure it's completely humid and then intend to pot it. Today, we'll also use some latex gloves. These are not necessary, but I find them useful just because the sand dunes have this sticky surface all over. I don't really want to damage them, so I'm going to be using the latex gloves to handle them. And overall, I'm going to avoid touching the leaves so I do not generate more stress. They have already under gone a lot of stress through the shipping so I want to keep them as healthy as possible. So let's just try it with the Drosera Venustia that we have right here. So let's get it out of its package first. Let's see. It already has some of the sphagnum moss around it. We don't really need to get it out. We can just look at the rhizome if we want. It is right there. It looks healthy and good. So let's just start by grabbing the pot. We're going to do this one with the sphagnum moss. So what I like doing is first adding the sphagnum moss so it fills up at least half of the pot. Put a little bit more in the base, back it in there. But leave a bit of a hole. Uh, on one side. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the, the sundew, we're going to press against it, put the sundew right here, hold it there in the center, and then get more of this sphagnum moss and just pack it on the side. I like sphagnum moss, but I sometimes find it difficult to, to pot the plants. Not because it's bad media, but it's just that because it's it's kind of, you know, the name says it all. It's long fibers, sphagnum moss. The long fibers sometimes can be tough to handle. All right, so I'm just going to pack the soil around and set this up. Once you have filled up the pot with, with the media and your plant is completely set, make sure to press the edges, make sure that there is no air pockets around. And once that is set, you're basically all done. The only thing I recommend is water them from the top so the media kind of packs up a little bit and your plant is secure in there. Do not be too worried about damaging the plant. Drosera are actually pretty resilient, but you know, avoid touching the, the green leaves just to avoid the stress. I'll continue potting now the rest. Oh, and don't forget, I always like keeping the tag. It's, it's very useful if later you want to find more information and learn more about their specifics. I'm actually not too familiar with Drosera or, or sand use in general, so I would love to learn more about it. If you'd like to share some of your knowledge, I'd really like it if you share some of it in the comments. I'll definitely read it. Just wanted to remind you, if you want to learn more about these type of projects and more about carnivorous plants, feel free to subscribe and join the community. 
Also, if you like this video, you will also be helping me out, helping the channel, and making sure that more people are actually getting access to this content. Thank you. All right, so now uh, let's go ahead and proceed with the next four. Caring for subtropical sundews is not extremely complicated, especially if you are already familiar with how to grow carnivorous plants. They need first carnivorous plant soil, so whichever media is appropriate for carnivorous plants, uh, which I explained earlier. They also need uh, pure water, so distilled water, rain water, or RO water. They can survive with without too much sun. They can actually survive with four to six hours of sunlight, which is all right, but I would never recommend just to stick into a four to six. Uh, never give them the minimum. Try to provide at least eight or, or even 12 if you can. I'm going to be placing these sand dews under some LED fluorescent lights that, oh sorry, some LED lights, not fluorescent, that I use for my carnivorous plants. Uh, they grow really well there, so I'm going to be placing them there. I'm actually going to start with only six hours of light first, just because these plants have been in the dark for several days, and then I'll start adding one hour every day until I get to 12 hours. And from there, I'm just going to continue providing uh, that amount of light and continue providing enough water to keep the soil always moist. In terms of humidity and watering, I like to use the water tray method to keep my carnivorous plants in a moist environment. So I just place them in a tray. I like using these large trays. In this way, I can place many plants in the same one. And then I just get my distilled water jug, add some water, just no more than a fifth or a fourth of the height of the pot. Once that's set, then I just let my plants get that water and when the tray dries out, then I refill it again. I always let it dry out to prevent any type of algae from growing and any type of mold issues. I'm going to be featuring these sundews quite a bit in the channel. I like to make several care videos to help you make sure that your sundews are healthy. So make sure to stay up to date with the videos that I post. Also, I have a bunch of content on Venus Flytrap and some of them in Nepenthes, so feel free to check it out. I've recently been experimenting with several propagation method, methods for Venus Flytrap, and I'm going to link to a couple of videos that I think you might find interesting. I hope this video encourages you to think about growing sundews. They are not hard to care for, and if you already own carnivorous plants, it will be a great addition to your collection. Thank you for watching.